Hi, this is Shauna and I am coming to you today from Wade's Toy Room. I'm just taking a quick break from playing Cook to show you what I've been working on this morning. Um, this episode number three is going to be more of a vlog type episode so that way I don't have to spend um, a whole day making a podcast so I'll just do bits and pieces here and there. Um, I'll put up um, at the beginning of the video at the, at the beginning of the podcast I'll put up where you can find me but you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as SL Hargis and um, you can uh, go to my website at shaunahargis.com. Um, if you're a returning viewer, thank you very, very much for um, subscribing and viewing my other podcasts and everything. Um, this is episode three, and um, thank you so much to all those who viewed the last two episodes. There, uh, I'm not the best at videoing, so um, I'm learning as I go, I guess. Um, it's Sorry about that. Um, so, as you can see, I'm wearing my campsite cardi, and I showed this off as a finished finished object Sunday. This today is what is today? Thursday, May twenty fifth, two thousand seventeen. I don't know when this podcast will go up because it'll probably I'll film little bits and pieces next week and get at least a forty five minute video. Um, but this is my campsite cardigan. Uh, designed by Alicia Plummer and yarn from uh, Arwen Makes on Ravelry. No, I'm sorry, not that. On Etsy. Arwen Makes on Etsy. And um, it's pretty chilly for May here today. And in um, I live in Alpine, Tennessee. And so I get to wear my cardigan probably for the last time until November or something. Um, but I am so in love with this. I'll stand up so you can see it. I am so, so in love with this cardigan. My first ever cardigan or sweater that I've ever made. And I'm probably going to be wearing it like every day next winter. Um, but anyways, what I've been working on today is um, a sewing project that I started back, I think in the fall. Uh, my son had requested this one for his room, so I was more than happy to make him a quilt. I'm just really, really slow at quilting because, I don't know, it's just, it takes a long time. I have to have every little piece perfect. I don't know why I do that to myself, but I do. So, slowly but surely, I'm getting there. And um, I'm making this, I think it's more of a full size um he has a queen or sorry he has a twin size bed right now and um the quilt hangs almost to the floor on both sides of the bed because i figure he um will eventually want a full size bed so i wanted it to be something he could grow into so i got this um it's i love plaid i've always loved plaid so i got this uh, material at hobby lobby and there's five different colors I think there's yeah five different colors. Um, I made a outdoor blanket last summer that had larger squares on the front and then um, a flannel sheet, an old flannel sheet in the middle, um, and denim on the back. And I did made that for like a picnic blanket to carry around, and um, I can use it. I used it in a lot of photo sessions last fall because it's really fall like colors. Um, but he wanted one like it, sort of, to go on his bed. So, I uh, may I cut out the pieces, probably about six inch squares, five or six inch. I don't know. I'll have to remeasure them. And I think I'm gonna have to end up cutting out some more. I went back and got some extra material just in case. Um, but I right now have got it's actually getting pretty big. Is about halfway. I can't really show it all on here. It's too big. But um, it's just a really simple, uh, simple quilt. 
any beginner, if you've never sewn anything before, you could make a quilt like this. If you wanted to make bigger, if you want to cut out bigger, like maybe eight inch um, squares, it would definitely make it faster. The other blanket that I made last summer, I think they were probably like eight inch squares. Oh, they were quite a bit, the squares in that one was quite a bit bigger and it, that one I just, I got had it put together in no time. Um, but this one's taking a quite a little bit longer because it's going to be bigger than the, the other one. Well, I don't really know. It may be about the same size. But anyways, the squares are a bit smaller. These may be five inches. They're probably about five inch, five and a half inch. And then you sew, um, a quarter inch seam on both, on all four sides and you end up with five inch squares, I think. I think it's five inch. Um, but anyway, it's just simple, um, simple sewing squares together. And um, I'm really picky about getting the corners lined up. That's just a thing of mine. The only, there's no pattern to how the colors go together. It's just that, you know, I want to make sure I don't have like two of the same touching each other. Um, it don't bother me if they're diagonal, but I don't want like red and red or red and red. So I'm just kind of mixing them up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need to get to get to the end of this, okay? Okay. I have to call everyone. Okay. So you need to start doing it. I can't call and cook at the same time, okay? Okay. I'll get, do you have a phone that I can borrow? Okay, cool. Well, actually, I'm going to have to use this one. Oh, okay. So you won't have to use this. I'll use my iPad. Right How about that? Okay. I'm going to get off that. Okay, I will. Um, I'm going to take a break for just a minute. Okay, so I am super addicted to brioche at the moment, and this is like all I've been wanting to work on. Um, I did make myself work on my other shawl, the spring into summer, summer shawl, um, for a little bit yesterday. And um, I'm part, almost all the way through the lace section. I really am not good at lace. I'm, I've come to the conclusion. Um, it's a lot for my brain to comprehend, I guess. It takes a lot of concentration for me to do lace. But anyways, um, and <clears throat> I'll show that to you later date when I get done with the lace. And um, I worked on the bunny just a little bit last night and I have one arm finished, but that thing is so tedious to, to work on. Um, I'm really kind of struggling to, to finish it at the moment, but I hope to get that finished by the end of, I will say by, by next week, hopefully I'll have that finished. And, uh, but anyways, this brioche shawl is like all I've really wanted to work on. I could sit here all day long and just knit brioche, I think. Um, so here's the back and yes, there are some mistakes, but I'm not ripping it out. Um, here's the back. Okay. And here's the front. Here's the main color. And the main color is muffin colorway by Wolfing. It's 80-20. Uh, merino nylon. Um, it's her sock yarn and the the dark color is the yarn I was showing you that I had messed up and I had to re-dye and um, it, it's actually looking pretty good when mixed with the muffin color. Um, and it's also 80-20 sock yarn and um, it, I get, I've, so far I've got my yarns to dye from, um, from wool to dye for and um <clears throat> i'm pretty i'm liking them they're soft um <coughs> excuse me i'm hoping to find maybe some more options on different types of yarn bases to try dyeing up just so i can you know try some different ones but anyways for now this will be fine um so as you can tell there are some mistakes like um right here somehow I got a hole in it so I don't know I guess I'll just like try to sew that up in a little bit um there was a few spots where um I purled when I should have knit and I didn't notice it until I was like way ahead and I didn't want to go back 
maybe I should have went back. Um, but for the most part, I mean, it's going to be scrunched up around. I think this is going to be for my mother. And you're going to like, you know, have it scrunched up around your neck. So I don't think that those places are going to matter too much. Um, after, for the last little bit, there's a mistake right there. But I, I've started doing pretty good on not making mistakes, I think. I don't see, I haven't noticed any mistakes in the last little, <clears throat> last little section I've done. So I think I, maybe I've got it. <clears throat> Get Everything is closed up. Okay. So I think I maybe I've got it down pat now. I did have to start this three times because I kept messing up at the beginning. Um, so brioche was a little bit, a little bit complicated just to get started on. Um, it, mostly it's just a new technique that you have to, um, you know, you have to do each row twice when you're doing two color brioche. I've never done one color brioche, but anyways, I don't know how exactly you do that, but, um, it's a little tricky to remember when in the beginning where you purl and where you knit. So, I did, um, also the increases kind of got me, um, a little confused. I did watch a video. I watched the Knitting Expat. Um, this design was by her, actually. But I watched her brioche tutorial, and it's very good. And I also watched another one by, I think it was by Sosu Knits, S-O-S-U or something. And, um, I don't know her name or anything. It was just on YouTube. Um, it was... It really, hers really went over in detail also about how, when to knit, when to purl, and that, um, the way she explained how to know when to knit and purl really helped me to, to see, so that way I don't have to be, didn't have to look, totally look at and keep up with each row, row by row, because I'm, I'm not good at keeping up with the rows, per se, like I forget to check them off or something, um, her video, the second one I watched also was really good at explaining the increases and decreases. And so whenever I actually saw um, the increase and decrease, it made it a lot easier to, to know what to do whenever I was doing it. Um, but anyways, I'm really loving this. I can't wait to get started, get one of these shawls finished and get started on the All About Brioche shawl, which is part garter stitch, part brioche, and I'm going to use the Galaxy yarn for that. Um, I also have dream knitting um, problem, and I want to do the Ramble shawl by Andrea Mowry, where it's got garter stitch stripes and then a herringbone pattern for brioche, and I really think it's just beautiful. And it's in DK weight, so it would, um, it would work up a lot quicker than a fingering weight shawl. Um, and I would love to someday make the Excuse Me Shawl by Stephen West, but at the moment, that is a lot of yarn to buy. So, you have to have, I mean, it takes like five skeins or something. Four or five skeins of um, fingering weight yarn, I think. I think it's like 1,200 plus yards, 1,500 yards or something of fingering weight yarn. No, wait, sorry. Maybe it's sport weight or DK. The Excuse Me Shawl is sport or DK weight. But, it, seriously, it's like 1,500 yards or something like that. Somewhere close to the, somewhere close to 1,500. And I just can't afford to buy that much yarn right at the moment. Um, especially since I have a ton in here that needs to be knit into something. So, the excuse me shawl will have to wait. But, I'm definitely going to do the All About Brioche. It just takes two skeins of fingering weight yarn. And I'm going to do the, and I already have those, um, I already have that much fingering weight that I can use, and I'm going to do the, all the um, Ramble Shawl, which takes, I think, two, I'm pretty sure it's just two, two skeins of DK weight, which I have that, and um, so, we'll, I'm going to start with those, and then um, see what happens. I also have um, plenty of yarn, plenty of finger weight, fingering weight yarn to make the So Faded Sweater. And I want to make, Wade has requested a red and maybe gray striped sweater. So I want to use the fingering weight that I have um, to make him one of those. It's all the fingering weight, most of it's undyed. So I'm going to dye it myself. Red and gray for him. And um, that's about all I have right at the moment. I'll uh, see you, I'll get back in a few days 
and um, hopefully I'll have, eh, I probably won't have a finished object in a few days. Um, I'm hoping to finish the driftwood socks within the next week or so and then I'll cast on the um, Tell His Eldest Time and Space to make those stripy socks. But I gotta go. See ya. Hello. Um, this is, let me start all over. Hey, this is part two of my vlog type podcast that I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm having a bit difficulty, um, finding time to sit down and film a whole podcast at one time. So I'm going to try doing little bits and pieces here and there whenever I get a chance. Um, so this is Memorial Day. What is today's date? 29th. So Monday, May 29th, 2017. And I just wanted to share with you a few things that I've been making the last few days. Um, I have been doing some more sewing. So actually I'll start off with this uh, dress and I actually made this a few weeks ago. I just keep forgetting to show it on the podcast. So this is material that I ordered from fabric.com. It's, uh, I think it's 100% cotton. It's a jersey knit, and I've been, I really, really love t-shirt dresses. So I got a few t-shirt dresses last year, and whenever I was watching um, the Yarngasm podcast, she was talking about making a t-shirt dress with jersey knit that she ordered. And so she'd got that from fabric.com. So I looked on there, I got some that was relatively inexpensive and um, I ended up with this awesome feather patterned fabric. So um, I decided I'd make a t-shirt dress. Um, one problem I had was I couldn't find a pattern that did not have a waist seam. So every pattern that I found um, I was trying to do like the PDF patterns that they do now and you print off and every pattern I found had um, a seam here on the waist and um, it was kind of, I mean, like the one that Kristen from the Yarn Guys and Podcast made, it was sort of A-line so it flowed, it went out at the bottom but it did have a seam. I went, I was, she used the Lady Skater pattern and I went to purchase it and I noticed that, um, some elastic was required and I got to looking and sure enough there was a seam right around the waist and I didn't want that. For one thing it's more stuff to cut out and extra stuff to sew but mostly I just really don't like the fit of um, the waist seams. So I have I think three t-shirt dresses and one of them has the elastic like gathered waist where it's a seam and I like it okay, but it's not my favorite. My two favorite ones ha are just straight, um, and they have no waist. It just goes all the way one piece down the front. So um, I decided I'd just make my own pattern. I used the dresses I got, I already had for the size, and um, I did find a, t uh, a dress pattern, and I used that for the sleeves. But it was more straight, so I used my dresses to do the angle for the the um, for the, it to flow out. Um, <clears throat> so, anyways, this was really easy to make once I figured out the pattern. And I go, I had some freezer paper, and I just used that to trace it, and I cut that out. And um, I have another. Um, it's a blue plaid knit fabric that I'm going to be making a dress out of. Um, but I've wore this a few times. I haven't had much chance to wear a dress. Um, I don't know if I stood up, if you could see it a little bit better. Oh, yeah, that's better. So, um, I'm going to change the hem on the next one and make it where this one, if you can see, the hem kind of goes up just a little bit. I'm going to try to make it go this way on the next one and <clears throat> see if I like that a little better. Um, but anyways, I love this, um, this material is very, 
very like sturdy feeling I guess it ha does have a stretch but it's not like so thin that I feel like I have to wear <clears throat> a slip and everything underneath it so <clears throat> that's this sewing the, this sewing pattern or project Next, I have been making project bags, and I'm going to make some more project bags this week. Um, I'm wanting to do a um, an Etsy shop, start up an Etsy shop, and start off with selling some project bags and um, maybe some purses. So, with this past year, I decided I'd make um, a purse. I went to look for to buy a purse and I couldn't really find one that had everything that I wanted and like looked how I wanted it and was in my price range. So I decided um, I would try making one and there is a place relatively close and it takes about an hour, a little over an hour to get there but anyways nothing's very close when you live out here. Um, so it's sort of close, so I went there and they have a ton of upholstery material of all different, like all different colors, all different um, types of upholstery material. And I found, <clears throat> sorry, it's morning and allergy season. Um, so I found some upholstery material and I made some purses, um, actually two purses this past year. And so I wanted to go back and get some more and start making some bags to put in the Etsy shop and I'm also thinking about doing the drawstring backpack type um, thing and but anyways we'll start with the project bags so I've made a few different pro types of project bags this past couple of months and um, I think I found the style that works for me so um, for one thing I don't like the zipper I just don't really, um, well, I don't really like to sew zippers. I'm not too great at it, but I can learn. But I just don't really like the idea of um, the yarn getting caught in the zipper. So, I, whenever I first started making socks, I put them in a random bag that um, I happen to have here. And it had a zipper on it, and I was finding that I always had to be careful about the yarn um, I always had to make sure I folded the bag over um, because the yarn would get caught tangled sort of in the zipper teeth and I didn't really like that. It was kind of um, a little irritating. Also, I was afraid that, you know, in transport it might like fall over and then whenever I unzipped it the yarn would get in there. I know a lot of people use the zippered project bags. They're very, very popular. But for me, I just would rather have a drawstring. I think it's more simpler. It's faster to just cinch it up versus having to piddle with a zipper. So, I'm making drawstring project bags. And this is, um, this is the design I have ended with for now. And I may, I'm, I'll probably make some changes. I've thought about adding a handle on one side because I know I've seen some different types of bags, um, project bags that have a handle. Um, for now, I've just been tying a little bow and using the drawstring as the handle to carry it around with. And this one would be my small bag um, for socks and, um, you know, smaller one skein projects. Or, eh, you know, you could probably fit a two skein project in here. I don't know. But anyway, I've had socks in this one, and there's plenty of room for um, for both so socks and even the extra little bit for the contrast cuff, toe, and heel. So, um, this zigzag chevron stuff, I happen to already have that material. Um, the bottom is a heavy canvas, which I had got to make the purses with, and... Um, I'm going to have to go and get some more of that to make a bunch more things, but I decided to put some fun polka dot material on the inside. And my driftwood socks have been in here. I've lost one. Oh, here it is. So, well, I'll go ahead and talk about this um, working project. Ugh, working, pro 
work in progress. And these are the Driftwood Socks by Mina Phillips. I've talked about them on the last um, podcast. And they got this really cool texture. Um, and it's a very, very easy pattern to follow. Um, one thing I did was I quit following like the repeats. She has it, you know, set like in different row repeats. And um, she has like a, a recipe sort of on the two samples that she has in the PDF. I decided I didn't feel like keeping up with, you know, do I need an eight row repeat, do I need a 10 row repeat. So I just kind of knit and then whenever I was like, well, I probably should add in a texture row here. So I added in a texture row. Um, so the socks are not going to match 100%. They're, the um, frequency of the texture repeats are not going to be the same on both socks. But anyways, I don't care. Um, I wanted to make these super long, as you can see. And um, uh, as I talked about in, previ in the previous podcast, this is a yarn that was, this is my first ever hand dyed yarn. And I wanted to use up as much um, of this as I could. I put this, some of this also in my Find Your Fade shawl. And then the turquoise was also dyed by me. And um, so this one, I just need to add the cuff, um, the ribbing on this one, and I'll be done with both pairs. Um, just a few minutes ago, I finished, I started on the ribbing yesterday evening for this one. And um, I stayed up kind of late last night. I've been watching this um, show called Outlander, which is really, really awesome. And I highly suggest you look that up because I'm pretty much addicted to this show. So I hadn't gotten, um, there's two seasons of it and I'm currently on the second season. I would have to say though that I like the first season better, but, um, <clears throat> but I'm still liking, really liking it and I want to see what happens. The only problem, the only problem is the third season's not going to come out until September. So that's a bit of a bummer. But anyway, um, I hadn't watched it in a few days, so I stayed up last night to watch Outlander and to work on the cuff of my sock. And so this one's completely finished. Um, I really, really love the contrast cuff toe and heels. Um, the last two socks I've done has had that. This was the fish lips to kiss heel. I haven't blocked it. I just finished it this morning. I got all the ends woven in. Actually, I probably won't block it because I don't really get the point of blocking socks. I just put them on my feet. I tried it on. It fits perfectly and it comes up to back to my, um, I guess mid-calf. Um, I think it ended up being like 12 inches from heel to the top. Maybe even be more than 12 inches. I think it was 11 inches from heel to the start of the cuff. And that's at least, so it's probably like 13 or 14 inches. Um, but anyways, I'm a really tall sock. My plan is to be able to scrunch it down some and wear it with my Timberland boots next winter. And also, I just like wearing tall socks around the house too. Um, in the winter time, whenever, you know, it's a little chilly. So... Hoping to get these finished completely by, you know, tonight or tomorrow. And um, I'll start on my Beauty and the Beast socks. I'm not 100% sure. I keep thinking I want to dye up some yellow for um, the toes and heels of the Beauty and the Beast socks. and But I'm not sure. In the, um, I don't know. I may try the toe of, I think I'll do them toe up. Because I kind of like doing these toe up. And, um, so I will, um, probably, I may try to do it starting on the toe of one of them and see if I like how it's, it's working and if, you know, I may not do contrast toe and heel, but I'm thinking about doing a contrast toe and heel and then just doing the cuff and the, um, the Beauty and the Beast color. Tell as old as time and space by Bad Wolf Girl Studios. I didn't bring any yarn in here or I would show it to you. Um, but I showed it on a previous podcast and it'll be a work in progress for later on. Um, another project bag that I made was this one. And I got this really fun camping travel summer material at Hobby Lobby. 
it's got, you know, the mountains. I love mountains. Some little campers and RVs and bicycles and tents. Super cute. Um, and for the inside of it, I found this, um, I don't know, paisley and flower thing at Hobby Lobby. Um, since Hancock's, Hancock Fabrics went out of business, the only local fabric shop we have, or the only local craft type shop we have is Hobby Lobby, which they have a lot of, they're getting even more, um, variety of fabrics recently, so I really, really like that, like going there to get some fabric, but anyway, um, I think I may have showed this on the last little snippet, but anyways, here is my brioche, the squishy shawl, which, yeah, I totally did show this on the last little snippet of, um, this vlog thing, but, so I won't talk about it too much, but anyways, I am totally, totally loving this brioche. Um, if I want something that's relaxing, I, I gravitate towards this, um, it's just, it's just so relaxing to me to, I don't know why, I would have never guessed that brioche would be so relaxing, um, to do, of a project to do, but it really is, and I'm just really loving it. So, I kind of stopped following the pattern, and I just, um, yeah, so over here you can see, is that the right side? I hope I haven't messed something up here. I probably have. But anyways, I think I've totally messed something up with it. Um, I have made mistakes. I had a bit of a problem with it, to be honest. And I think I'm... I may have to frog back again. This is kind of a bummer. But at some point, I did get a little off track with it. And, um, but anyways, I'm just counting up, like, you can see where the decreases are, and so I'm not really, like, um, you increase, increase, and you do, like, a decrease every once in a while. So, I don't know. I may have to start, I may have to take it all out and start back way down here, which is going to bum me out, but, I don't know. We'll see. It happens. Um... And then, my last work in progress is this bunny that I have shown you before. I finally got one arm done, and I started on the other arm yesterday. Maybe I can finish this arm today. I don't know. I may work on this for a little while and take a break on the socks, because I don't really like doing the ribbing. And um, so this right here is just, you know, plain stocking it in the round. So it's pretty simple. Um, so I may do that, and then... I don't like starting the legs where you pick up the stitches because it's hard where this is stuffed. It's really hard to knit those first few rows. So that that's really slowed me down on finishing this bunny. But I need I need to get this finished. Um, and I'm really wanting to get started on those um, Beauty and the Beast socks because I've never knit with a sparkly yarn before and I'm really really excited about that um I also need to finish my swatch for my so faded sweater but it's kind of put on the back burner until I can get some things actually finished I need to stop starting stuff um but here's what I've got on my swatch so far and I wanted to see how the colors look together so um, I went ahead and used all different, the different colors of yarn. I'm, so I'm going to use four colors in my sweater. The pattern calls for five. I'm, I'm just going to use four, I think. I don't know. If I run out, I'll just add in a fifth color. But anyways, I think I'll have enough. I looked at the yardage requirements, and I think four skeins should do it. Um, I know with my cardigan, four skeins was more than enough. But anyways... So I've got, you know, first, this would be like the top down. So it's going to start out really light, slightly darker, then go into purple. Now I didn't do the, I just switched it. I didn't do like the fading in by 10 row or 5 rows or anything. 
Um, and then it's going to end with, which is the, this one. Yeah. So it will end with this um, more bluer color right here. So I'm going to try to get this swatch finished very, very soon. Um, but I don't know exactly when I'm going to cast on for the sweater. Hopefully soon. Um, I'm going to have to take a break from knitting some to get some of these project bags out of the way. So that way I can go ahead and open up an Etsy shop. Because um, I'm going to need some cash flow if I'm going to keep crafting since I am now unemployed. Um, I think I heard my son in there finally woke up. We've had a busy weekend, so he slept in this morning. Um, he does tap and tumbling with a local dance studio, and so this was recital Friday night, and then two recitals on Saturday, and um, he loves, loves the dancing, but it does make for a busy weekend, but it's just once a year, so it's fine. And I love watching it, really. I love all the dance. I love, I used to clog whenever I was younger, and I just love all the dancing. Um, oh, here's another bag that's completely empty. Um, but this would be a sock size bag as well. And, um, I did an order from fabric.com and it came last week so I have all this cool um, material I got a yard of each which a yard can make a lot of the sock size bags <clears throat> I can make well I don't know how many really I could fit in it doesn't take a whole lot um, the sock size bags you know they're pretty small and since I use this and then I do a contrast color it doesn't take a whole, much, uh, a whole lot. I need to find some more contrasting um, material, though. I don't, I don't have enough plain material for the contrast for the inside. But here's these cute little foxes. And I'm thinking about doing a plaid, um, a brownish plaid for the inside of the fox bags. And I'm really in love with the Exploding Tardis. Totally, totally going to make one of these for myself. Um... And then, I love all this bohemian feathery stuff that they, that's in style now. So I got dream catchers and they're all different colors. They're like my favorite colors. I don't know. I hope everybody else loves the, my style, but I may end up with a gajillion project bags to use or give away. But anyway, it'll be alright. I think these TPs are awesome. Turquoise is definitely, any type of blue is my favorite color, but... I'm really in love. I've always loved Indian type, um, like Aztec type stuff and the, the feathers and the arrows and stuff like that. So I'm really glad that that's in style right now because, you know, um, I'm finally in style and that's really fun. But anyways, I'm excited to get to working on these. I just need, I'm hoping I have something in my stash back here that I can use for contrast. Um, I did get some blue for the, the TARDIS one, but I might have to take another trip to Cookville to Hobby Lobby today, or, or not today, but this week to get some, something to go inside of these three colors here. Um, but my son is awake at the moment, so I'm going to get off and, hi, I'm going to pop back in real quick. Um, hopefully the mower is not too loud for you. But I did have to frog out a lot, quite a lot. So, anyways, it, as you just saw, there was a um, bit of a mistake over here. So I ended up having to take out a lot of um, of it. So here you can see it's all wrapped around. It, it was quite a lot, but you know. It happens mistakes happen so I'd rather take it out now than wish forever that I had fixed it um, I think what happened was well I, I liked the brioche so much that I was taking it with me 
and I guess I'm not all that great with it to, you know, take it whenever there's going to be a lot of distractions. Um, so I had it with me for my son's dance recital because we had to arrive an hour early. So I thought, you know, I, <clears throat> I thought, well, I'll bring this and I'll knit on it for um, the hour before the thing starts. And then um, I also brought a sock head slouch hat. And I thought, you know, I'll knit on that while the recital's going on because it's just stuck in it in the round, so you really don't have to think about it. But apparently, there was still too many distractions, and um, we ended up having to sit because he was the only boy in the dance recital, um, which might be a little weird, but I don't know. He loves it, so I hate to tell him, no, you can't do this because you're the only boy. Um, so. <clears throat> um, where he was the only boy, we had to sit, like, at the side, right on the stage, but backstage, behind the curtain, um, so, the lighting wasn't as good as I expected it to be, so whenever I saw that the lighting was kind of not that great, I probably should have just stuck with the sockhead style chat, but I thought, you know, there's light, I can see, but then, the not-so-great lighting combined with all the distractions of people running back and forth did not make for the best brioche knitting or any new knitting technique uh, you know time to knit a new thing so I've, on, I've only been knitting I only started this shawl last Sunday so you know not yesterday but you know a week ago and um, so I've not been doing the brioche that much like you know just a few days um uh, five or six days and so and that's you know I don't even think I knit on this every single day last week <clears throat> but I try to get a couple of rows in per day um <clears throat> but anyways if I had been knitting brioche a little bit longer the distractions probably wouldn't have caused such a mistake but I had somehow gotten off I'd gotten messed up over here where the decrease was, and um, I tried backing it up, but then evidently I didn't go back far enough. It was still messed up, and I just realized that whenever I showed you this morning. Um, also, while I was ripping it back, it looked like I'd gotten, I don't know, like I'd, I knit half of a row, and then I started it on another, like I, I was knitting one way, and then I like just stopped and started back the other way. I don't know what in the world I did, but it was a pretty, it was pretty messed up. But anyway, I think I've got it on the right track now. There's still some mistakes way down here, like I talked about in the other, I don't know, what every day last week. Um, but I think I've got it going good and, um, I'll keep on going with this and may install a lifeline right about here so that way it'll be easier if I have to rip back which surely to goodness I won't have to rip back I'll just make sure that this is something I knit on whenever there's not going to be a ton of distractions I think with the way the brioche is and I'm not too too very used to it I think stopping in the middle of a row is it's kind of um one thing that gets me mixed up right now because I have to sit there and think for a minute, like, do I slip or do I knit or do I purl? Um, so if I, if I can finish one whole row before taking a break, that um, really helps. I'm sure that after doing this more, it, it won't be that big of a deal. Um, one thing I'm not really sure... I end up with some loose stitches towards the ends. Do you see that? Like right here, this big loose stitch. I don't know how that happens. It's you really just on, I think it's just on this end where the decreases are. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong to cause, maybe I'm, my gauge is too loose at the end or something. I'm going to have to try to figure, I'm going to have to try to tighten that last stitch up from now on. But anyways, um, I still really like this pattern, and for a beginner in two-color brioche, this is a very good pattern to start with because 
you know, it's just got the basic brioche increases and decreases. My biggest problem with this is that I get carried away and forget to increase or decrease. So that's totally me. I get carried away, I get to the end, and I'm like, oh no, I was supposed to increase. So then I have to go back a few stitches and um, do the increase, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, you increase, you do an increase at the end. Okay, I keep having trouble with the memory on my iPad. I don't know, there's not hardly any photos or video. Well, I've been doing more videos, obviously, since I've been doing the, the podcast, but... Once I upload it, I delete all the videos from that particular podcast from my iPad. And for some reason, I always have a ton of photo and video things on here. Like when you go to the storage and settings and memory used, like just now it cut me off from videoing. And I went over there to see and it said I had like almost 15 gigabytes of photos and, and uh, camera and photo. But I don't have hardly anything on there. Um... So I don't know what the deal is. I have to keep signing out of my iCloud and signing back in. And then I, I, I don't know. It's really weird. I just don't understand. Um, I don't even, I have a ton of photos and video, or photos and videos on my iPhone. But even that is, doesn't take up 14 gigs of, of stuff. So I don't know why my iPad keeps telling me I have so many gigabytes of camera and photo whenever I don't. I don't know. But anyway, so you increase on the right side, which apparently is a brioche thing, which I'm calling this the right side. It's technically reversible, but I'm saying this is my main color and the dark is my contrast color. So you increase um, on the main color and then ever so often you do a decrease on the main color also. So you can see where the decreases occur. Um, and then, where the, the magical thing about brioche is, it just, like, you do the increases, and it just, um, it makes this little ledge, or edge here, and it just looks like there's little, I don't know, lines sprouting off of it or something. I don't know. But anyway, someday I might do, um, try a pattern where it has, like, the little, you know, curvy designs in it and stuff, but... For now, I'm just going to stick with um, straight, straight, lined, whatever. This simple, simple stuff. Um, and, oh, I need to show you my spring into summer shawl real fast because I have done some stuff on it. I'll be right back. Okay, so here is, um, it's another project bag I made. This one, I made it a bit too wide, but I still like it because I love the feather material. But, um, it's just a bit too wide. But anyways, here is my spring into summer pattern by Mina Phillips. And, um, this shawl actually does have a right and wrong side. This is just the way the texture shows up better on the right side versus, so it's more like flatter, I guess, on that side. But anyway... I have about four more rows of the lace. I've decided that I'm not really all that great with lace. I, I don't particularly like it. Um, I don't think I've done it correctly, but it looks okay, so I'm just going to deal with it, okay? Um, the lace is, for me, hard to memorize. And it's not just this pattern. I had the same trouble with the Find Your Fade shawl. Um, so I think I just have a problem with lace and, um, you know, some people like certain things when knitting and I think lace is just one of those things I'm not too good at. Of course, now take for granted, this is my second time doing lace, so that might have a problem, be a problem also, but I do like the way it looks. I don't know that it looks like it's supposed to, but... It has a nice, interesting little texture. So, yeah, I like it. Um, but anyways, I got like four more rows of lace. And then I'm going to stop. I'm not going to extend the lace panel anymore. Um, 
then there'll be another section of garter stitch and then it'll go back to um, the different color textures. Um, I don't have a whole lot of this color left over so the second half will probably, I'm going to use up the rest of the blue. Well, I may save a few grams to put in my granny square, no, well, whatever, rainbow blanket. Um, uh, so my crochet square blanket. I may save a few grams of each. I may make like, um, because I, I don't know if I'll have, I don't know how much extra yarn from each color I'll have. Um, so I may do like um, a multicolored square if I need to. But anyways, I'm going to use a lot more blue. So I'm probably going to do... I'll do the garter panel, or the garter section, then I'll probably do, um, I'm not decided yet. I may just do blue again. So it may just, the colors will probably like repeat like they are here. So it'll go, um, this coloring, the garter pan, the garter section, then it'll be a bigger section of blue. Some of this winter is coming. As much pink as I have and as much of this purpley pink as I have. I'll save a few grams of each. If I save three grams of the blue, pink, and the purple, purpley blue, that'll make one square. So, if it looks like I'm going to be short on colors, which I'm fairly certain I'm going to be very, very short on this. I don't know if I'll even get, well, I'll, I'll say, I'll make sure, I'll just make a thin stripe. It'll be fine. And then... I'll just finish off with the garter in this and um, knit it until I have about nine grams left and then make a square for my blanket. Um, of course, I mean, I'll have to save some for bind off, so I'll knit until I have some, I don't know how much, um, and then uh, make a square for my blanket. And so, because the, the very end, you see, it starts out with garter, then you do the colors, then you do the more neutrally color here. And then um, at the end, you have another section of garter garter stitch. So, um, I'll just go with it until I think it's big enough. Um, I think, yeah, this is technically the top. So, it'll be something like this. And then I'll keep on going. And... That is all I have for today. Hopefully, I'll get some photos um, to show you, um, to put in here. I need to start back taking more documentary photos. Um, I've not been picking up my camera a whole lot this winter. I've barely, barely been picking up my camera this winter. I don't know what has happened. Um, but I'm going to try to get my camera out today and take some um, documentary type photos, lifestyle, whatever, um, to kind of document our Memorial Day. And then um, at some point I'm going to, on one of these podcasts, make a little video for you to see, um, you know, a little like one minute video or something, 30 seconds, um, just to you know, our front yard and all the, the views we have and everything. Um, but without further ado, I'll let you go. Um, and yeah, I don't know when this will be uploaded, so I would say happy Memorial Day, but it's probably going to be next week before you actually see this. So bye for now. Hey, um, I'm sitting here waiting to do a photo session real quick, so I thought I would hop on. I've been meaning to get on here today and um, just do a little like ending to the podcast vlog thing for this week. Um, I really don't have anything else to show y'all, so um, since 
the video. I've been editing it on iMovie, and since it's already reaching like 50-something minutes, I thought I'd go ahead and end it with what I've, I've already shown you so far. So I just wanted to hop on and say that um, that'd be all the stuff until, um, I don't know, hopefully next week I can do something else. Um, but it might be the week after, just depending on how quickly I can knit some stuff up, I guess. Um, so, really don't have anything else to say. We, um, we've been enjoying our summer vacation. Um, we haven't really done anything yet. Uh, today I did make, or I didn't make, but I cut out a bunch of pieces. I'm going to make a bunch of project bags and hopefully sometime within the next week or so it'll probably be like a couple of weeks i've got to go get some more supplies um but hopefully within the next couple of weeks i can um i can open up an etsy shop and i've been wanting to do that for quite a while so um hopefully i'll get that done and then um y'all can i'll have the project bags to show you but anyways you saw the material already and um well, that's it. So, <clears throat> I'll hopefully be on again next week, and um, hope everybody has a great